Okay, so this is a paper three question differential equations, and I'm going to take you through the entire problem, and we'll see how it goes. Um, the first one here, and whenever you do a paper three question, it's really important that you take a moment and read the question from beginning to end, so that you get a sense of where it's heading and kind of what kind of things you want to do, and you follow what it says to do, even if you're not sure about the path that it's taken you on. So first of all, here, so we this is about uh, a coupled system differential equation with one eigenvalue. So here's our system, and here's the, uh, the matrix, the one eigenvector. And so to find the eigenvalue in the eigenvector, it's simply you find the determinant of uh, 3 minus lambda, 1 minus lambda, the determinant, set it equal to 0. And then you multiply a and d, subtract b and c, set it equal to 0 solve it and you end up with this perfect square quadratic so lambda is 2 there's only one solution and you end up with the eigenvalue you plug lambda in solve the system and you know that there's lots of different possibilities for this but you end up with 1 negative 1 as your eigenvector this is a fairly straightforward seven points that should be an e easy seven points for, for everyone now it gets a little bit more challenging though when we look at, at B part, well, let's ignore C, we look at B part here, we want to verify that this is a solution to our system. Okay, and so there's, if you're going to verify it, there's two things going on here. One thing is you have to basically come up with two equal results by different methods. Okay, and so if I look here, I know that this is the derivative of x and the derivative of y. So looking here, if I know that x, specifically if I is equal to e to the 2t, and y is specifically negative e to the 2t, okay? If I find the derivative, because this is the derivative here, if I find the derivative of these, so if I find the derivative of x, I end up with equal to e to the 2t, the chain rule says take the derivative of that, I get 2. And if I do it for y, take the derivative of y, I end up with equal to negative e to the 2t. Chain rule says take the derivative of that, gives me a 2, and it's negative. Let me write that a little bit better. So the derivative is equal to negative 2 e to the 2t. But if this is a solution, the derivative is also equal to this combination. Okay, and so if I say the derivative of x is equal to 3, well, x is e to the 2t plus y is negative e to the 2t, which simplifies to 2e two to the 2t's. The derivative of y here do the same thing as negative, I plug in x is e to the 2t plus uh, negative e to the 2t is my y value, and here I get negative 2e to the 2t. And so I'm able to show that this produces the same result of a derivative when I use a system this way, or if I use the system this way, I end up with a derivative both ways. And that will verify it. Now, when you look at the mark scheme, it's done in a different way. The mark scheme has done this method, but dealing with this substitution, it did it slightly differently. It went from, let's take this and move it down here. Okay, what it did is it recognized that the derivative of x and derivative of y was equal to the matrix 3, 1, negative 1, 1 times x, y. Well, from here, x, y, we know is equal to 3, 1, negative 1, 1. If I plug in my value of x, y, I get 1, negative 1, e to the minus 2t. Okay, and so now one of the things that's true about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and this is something that we did way at the very beginning, is if I have a matrix A times some vector x, y, 
then B is some constant times the same matrix. So basically what eigenvectors and eigenvalues say is this is a constant and this is a matrix. These are the same vectors. And so what, hap what happens here is these are special. So if you can take a matrix times a vector equal to a constant times a vector, then, you, then this is the eigenvalue and this is the eigenvector. Well, we know what the eigenvector is and we know what the eigenvalue is. So I can, I know that our solution is lambdas 2, negative 1 as our eigenvalue and eigenvector. So I can replace this with my eigenvalue times my eigenvector times e to the minus 2t. And this is clearly equal to that, which is 2e to the negative 2t and minus 2e to the minus 2t is also what x dot, what the derivative here is equal to. And so there's actually, so the key is this one for sure I had to do, no, my apologies. So this one is for sure I had to do the derivative one on this side here. I had to take the derivative. Whether I chose this method or this method doesn't really matter because I use the system of the, this system to come up with showing that the solution was true, was valid. Here I took the derivative of it to show that the derivative was the same as this derivative, that they were equal. And so that's a verifying where you have to come up with a similar, similar result in two different ways. Okay, so that was B part. Going to C part now, it's a similar scenario, but a little bit different because now we're told that this is my solution. All right, so if I want to find the solution, I'm going to actually take, the, I'm going to take the derivative of x. Well, actually, before I do that, let me rewrite this vector x, y. I'm going to rewrite it as t e to the 2t and negative t plus 1 e to the 2t. And now I'm going to take the derivative of them. The derivative of x with respect to t, this is a product rule. So I take the derivative of t, which is 1, times the second function, plus the first function, t, times the derivative of the second, which is going to be e to the 2t, chain rule comes in here, times 2. Which if I simplify that, I get e to the 2t, 1 plus t, 1 plus t. When I do the g derivative, or the y derivative, again, I take the derivative of the first one, which is going to be negative 1 times the second function, plus the first function times the derivative of the second, which I just was 2e to the 2t. And if I simplify this, I get negative e to the 2t plus negative 2t e to the 2t when I distribute it, plus 2e to the 2t. Oh, I just realized I forgot a 2 here. Here's a 2. When I simplify this together, I get negative 2t e to the 2t and a plus 1 e to the 2t. I can factor out an e to the 2t, which leaves a negative 2t plus 1. All right, so this is one way of I've done half the verification. I've taken the derivative of the solution because that's what I know is true. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug my solution into here. So if I take that, I know my solution. Let me take a quick shot here. This is my solution. This, I am going to substitute it into my x and my y. And let me use a different color here. Let me do it in purple. So I'm going to plug x into x and y into y. So the derivative is 3. Well, x is t 
e to the 2t plus y is negative t plus 1 times e to the 2t. What well, if I simplify that? I get 3t e to the 2t minus t e to the 2t plus e to the 2t, which is 2t e to the 2t plus e to the 2t. If I factor out e to the 2t, I get 2t plus 1. And so there is my derivative of x. Happily, that is the same. <clears throat> when I go to my y, well, that's going to be equal to my negative x value, negative t e to the 2t, plus my y value, which is negative t plus 1 e to the 2t. Multiplies out and collect like terms, I get negative t e to the 2t minus t e to the 2t plus e to the 2t, which is if I pull out an e to the 2t, e to the 2t, I have negative 2t plus 1. And this is my der derivative of y. And if you look, that is also the derivative of y here. So because this value, derivative of x, and the derivative of y is equal to this derivative of x and this derivative of y, we can clearly say that this is also a solution. Looking at b part, and now b and e we should be able to do is not as rigorous as the previous ones, and it's not dependent upon it. So that's one of the things during reading time you have to recognize that these are ones you could be able to do without knowing b and c. So when I consider this, okay, I'm going to plug in t equals 0 to both of those with x being 20 and y being 30, or 10. Oh, this is 20. This is 10. These are going to be 0. So when this is 0, that means this is 1 and this is 1. And so I get an equation of a. Those are zeros. a, the b's cancel, a is equal to 20. As you can see, when I do that, I get a is equal to 20. And then b is going to be, well, the y value is 10. And I'm going to need to get negative a plus b, which if I do my algebra here, I end up with 30. And so there is my general solution for, well, there's my particular solution for this particular scenario. E part says then find the values of x and y when t is 2. Well, we have our equation now. We just plug 2 in for t. And when we do that, we end up with these values here. And it's just a simple, straightforward calculation. Moving on to f and g then, well here is our particular solution that we're work working with. We want to look now as t goes to infinity. As t goes to infinity, we have to look at each of these terms here. And what I recognize is that these exponential graphs exactly cancel each other out. And so they're going to infinity at an equal rate. If one of these values would have been like 3t, well then this would go faster. But because they're exactly the same, they're going at the same rate. So it's not the exponent part that's going to cause uh, the asymptote, but rather where else is there t? Well, this is just going to be constant 1 and negative 20, whereas this one here, these cancel each other out, and so this is going to a value of t, and this is going to a value of negative t. And so this here is the dominant term because it has t's in it. This is just constant. And so we have to recognize that from here. So I know that this is the dominant term, right? And so x is going to be t, and y is going to be negative t plus 1. Well, I don't actually care about plus when I, when I go to infinity, so infinity, negative infinity plus 1 doesn't really matter. And so what I know is that these are basically equal. If I plug this t into here, I get y is equal to negative x because I can ignore the 1 because 
in terms of infinity, whether I have a thousand or I have a thousand and one, they're basically the same, so I could ignore that. And so this is the asymptote. As t goes to infinity, this is dominant. So here is our asymptote, y equals negative x. And so if I think about that, here is y equals negative x. Doo -doo -doo. State the direction of the directory, including the quadrant, it's in as it approaches the asymptote. Well, as t goes to positive infinity, that's key, it's positive, the x values are getting positive and the y values are getting negative. And so as x gets positive, y gets negative. And so the values are going away from the origin. So away from the origin, uh, away, of or, uh, away from the origin, and it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. Okay, these the, these last two are a little bit tri trickier. This, um, but in here, I believe D and E part are quite straightforward. A is quite straightforward. B and C, once you get the ideas, verify that you can just plug these solutions in. I think that's that's a help too. Um, so there's our paper three.